And so the ultimate big question we might have in our lives is really, why is there something? Or in other words, why is there something rather than nothing? I don't know if you've ever, so you, some people are looking at me slightly puzzled, wondering why on earth are you worrying about that? But think about it, it's kind of strange. Look around yourself, everything you see, the beauty of nature, uh, people around you, everything. I wonder, why, why is this all here? Why is there something rather than nothing? It's the kind of ultimate deep question. And so, and we might hope that by looking at this question, we'll get some sense of why we're here or where we're from. And what's interesting about this question, the reason I'm harping on it a little bit is because I think it points towards uh, a very important um, principle that I want to get across today, which is that as much as science helps us in sharpening and in formulating these questions, it doesn't really help us in answering them. And I want to illustrate that to you with this question. So why is something rather than nothing? Well, one possibility would be that something has always existed. And so when we think of why is our universe here, we really shouldn't think initially about why is the matter here that makes our universe. But we should ask ourselves the question, where, why are the laws of nature, the laws of physics, that allow our universe to exist? Where did they come from? Why are they here? So one possibility would be those laws have always existed. There have always been laws of nature. And, uh, or else maybe there are previous laws of nature that cause our current laws of nature. Either way, you have something that is very odd because something, the question is what caused those laws that caused our laws? Well, some other set of laws that caused those laws. And it goes on ad infinitum. And so you have something which is definitely different from anything that we know in science, something which has an infinite series of causes or something which might have actually been itself, uh, has always been. So that's a possible but a difficult uh, thing to get your head around. The other possibility would be, well, okay, if you don't like that, you don't like this idea of an infinite regress, then perhaps the laws of nature just popped into being out of um, nothingness, out of ontological nothingness, right? So that means, nothingness means not just empty space that something pops into, but real nothing, nothingness. So no laws of nature, no laws of mathematics, no laws of logic, real nothing, nothingness. So again, that's po possibility. Uh, but it's a very strange one. And if you're a, a naturalist, if you believe that there's nothing except the laws of nature and what they've caused, then you're more or less stuck with one of these two options. Either um, the, the laws of nature have all existed or some, they're preceded by some other set of laws of nature ad infinitum, or they popped into being out of real true nothingness. Now, either of those could be true, right? It's hard to know which one of the true, but they are definitely um, they are uh, um, metaphysical, philosophical points. So those, and they're both rather unsatisfying, I think, but some people find them very satisfying. The other option would be that um, the whole of space-time is dependent on a non-spatio-temporal reality, a being who cannot not exist. So that sounds very complicated. So let me explain to you in a slightly simpler way. So this would be what theists would traditionally call God, right? So when Theists, like Christians or other major religions, think about God. They don't think about God as a being like ourselves, who is only bigger uh, and, um, you know, kind of bigger and smarter. But God is somehow something completely different. So God would be the, the final cause, in the words of the early theologians, or the, 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 the uh, sorry, the first cause. The, the, the reason why, the way, the way that you get around this problem of having um, either something exists eternally or something popping out of true nothingness would be there is something that's not part of this, nat this natural world which is who, who has a different kind of nature and therefore caused this world. Now, if you're not a theist, then that's going to sound a little bit odd because I'm introducing some concept of God to you and I, I, I'm perfectly happy for you to find that odd. I just wanted to point out that all three of these options are odd. So all of us are kind of stuck in this world, whether you believe in God or not believe in God, in having some kind of premise which on its, just by itself, looking at it just by itself, seems odd. And it's definitely not scientific, it's philosophical or theological. So every single one of you in this room is a philosopher or a theologian of some kind. You have some kind of philosophy or some kind of theology. And uh, I just wanted to point that out at the beginning. That was a bit of a heavy way of starting. Um, but I wanted to start that way because I want to get you away from the idea that these questions about science and faith and how they interlink uh, are really about science. They're really a lot more about philosophy or theology.